So you may be wondering why we need to know what partial fraction decomposition is or what are the uses of it. I mean, when we get to calculus, we're going to use partial fraction decomposition in integral calculus to help us integrate things much easier, things that expressions that we wouldn't otherwise be able to integrate without using partial fraction decomposition. Um, also, when we get to differential equations, we're doing the inverse Laplace transform, which is something you don't need to worry about now. Uh, this is an absolutely essential thing that we are going to need to know how to do. So you may be used to seeing expressions like this, where you, ha you have to solve, you have 1 over x plus 2 plus 2 over x minus 3, and you're like, okay, we're going to combine this into one fraction, we find the common denominator, and then we add up the numerators, and then we get this expression on the right-hand side. I think that's something that we're all familiar with at this point. But the theory of partial fractions is we're going to try to find, beginning with this, we're going to try to find these two numbers over here. So essentially, when we do the partial fraction decomposition, we're given an original expression, which may or may not be factored in the denominator. So just same expression here. We're given 3x plus 1, for example, all over x plus 2, x minus 3. And we need to figure out, OK, what is this equal to? We need two fractions. We need two fractions, we know, because we have two factors in the denominator. We need two fractions, but we need to know what the constants in the numerator are. So that's what we're going to use partial fraction decomposition for. So in this case, the way that we would do this is we say we have two factors in the denominator. We have x plus 2 and x minus 3. So we know that we need two terms here. We're going to need some, some term a over the first factor, x plus 2, plus another real number, b, over the other factor, which is x minus 3. So as you can see here, what we're trying to do with the partial fraction decomposition is we're trying to find these, these original two numbers so that we can break up this quotient of polynomials into something simpler. Because the, the denominator here is going to be some quadratic polynomial, and that's kind, of, that's kind of gross and disgusting. When you get to calculus, you don't want to integrate quadratic polynomials. Much easier to integrate something like this. Uh, so when you're asked to find the partial fraction decomposition, you're going to go ahead and set it up like this. But first, you need to check that the degree of the numerator, the highest degree of the numerator, is, not, is less than the uh, highest degree of the denominator. So in this case here, if we would FOIL this out, we would find that the highest degree of the denominator is 2 and the highest degree of the numerator is 1. So we don't need to do polynomial long division. But if, it's, if this is not the case, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree, the degree of the denominator, um, we would need to go ahead and use polynomial long division to simplify our entire expression um, in order to get some kind of number constant or function plus the partial fraction decomposition. Because otherwise, we're going to get some inaccurate expression. Um, so other things to keep in mind when you're doing a partial fraction decomposition is if you have something like this, say we had 3x plus 1 all over x squared plus 2 times x minus 3. So this is going to be a little bit different here because we have an unfactorable, an unfactorable quadratic in this term. We can't factor out x squared plus 2 into, you know, nicely like we can here. So what we're going to need to do is instead of just having some kind of a over x plus 2, we need to have ax plus b. This is accounting for the fact that there's an unfactorable quadratic equation in the, um, in the denominator of this function. So we're going to go ahead and put that over x squared plus 2. And then here, this is already factored, not an unfactorable quadratic. So we can just do the same thing here, just with one number, c over x minus 3. This is very important to keep in mind. If you were to just put a here instead of ax plus b, you would get a completely incorrect answer. So it's very important to keep in mind that when you have an unfactorable quadratic in the denominator, we need to set it up like this with two terms in the numerator, the ax term and the b term, or some term with x and some term without x. And one final thing to keep in mind when you're doing the partial fraction decomposition is that if you have uh, something in the denominator, some factor in the denominator with algebraic multiplicity greater than 1, uh, you need to have that, have that many number of terms on the right-hand side corresponding to it. So uh, an example of this using the same numerator here would be if we had 3x plus 1 all over, and say we had x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 3 here. So say we had something like this. And you may be thinking, oh, we only have one x plus 2 term. You know, we, we just do the same thing, a over x plus 2 plus b over x minus 3, we're good to go. That is indeed not the case here. So you see we have what's called the algebraic multiplicity. The algebraic multiplicity of this here is going to be 2, because this expression here, 3x plus 1 all over this quantity here in the bottom, 
is going to be equal to 3x plus 1 all over x plus 2 quantity squared times x minus 3. So we have to account for the fact that we have two uh, occurrences of the x plus 2 term here in the denominator. And we can do that by setting up partial fraction decomposition as follows. If we have uh, a factor in the denominator here of algebraic, algebraic multiplicity n, in this case n equals 2, we need to have n corresponding terms in the partial fraction decomposition on the right-hand side, which I will illustrate here. So we have, here we would set up the partial fraction decomposition by saying, here we have a over x plus 2. And we just take the first factor here, so x plus 2 to the 1. So we would do this in increasing order. And then we have to add on here b over x plus 2 quantity squared. And then finally, we would have c plus the last term, which is just of algebraic multiplicity 1. So as you can see here, it might not be immediately clear why we're doing this, but it's essential that we indeed do it. Because if we just did a over x plus 2 plus, for example, b over x plus 2, that would be also incorrect, because that's equal to a plus b over x plus 2. And we would not get a correct partial fraction decomposition as our result. So uh, here we, we see that we have two terms corresponding to the x plus 2. We had an algebraic multiplicity of 2, so we're good to go. And the way that we do that is we have, we do the degree here of an increasing order. So we have x plus 2 to the 1 over x plus 2 to the 2. You just do that over and over and over again until you have, you get to whatever your power was raised to in the denominator. And finally, once you execute the partial fraction decomposition and you have what, what, you, what looks to be a correct final answer, it's always good practice to just check to make sure that you get, by adding them together, you get your original expression. So say we solved this for a, b, and c, and we got a final answer. We could just combine, get, get a common denominator, and combine all these terms here into one expression. And if we get the original expression, we've done our partial fraction decomposition correctly. But if not, we should go back and check. It's very easy to make small algebra mistakes when you're doing this. So it's very important to check. Uh, so those are a couple of important things to remember when you're doing a partial fraction decomposition. To see additional pre-calculus practice problems, you can click this link here. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. To visit our website, you can click here. And finally, to return to the main menu, click here. As a reminder, if you haven't already done so, you can purchase the pre-calculus blueprint by clicking on the link in the description of this video. Remember, it's only $1.95. Thank you for watching.